We started Arts and Services in 1982 at a Parks and Recreation building in Long Beach. And it was myself, another music therapist, and an art therapist, and five students. The building itself was a big Parks and Rec building, had a stage, and um, I remember there was a kitchen, and that's where our art classes were because the kitchen had um, a work table and it had a sink for the paints. Those early days were so important because it really helped us establish what our love before learning philosophy was all about. Love before learning means accepting somebody for who they are, respecting them with dignity, making sure that they feel like they belong, that they're productive, that they're safe. Today, I think Arts and Services for Disabled has really grown and has paved the way. Uh, I almost think of it as, you know, the black and white days of those early days, and now we're in full color. First, we want to get the clay ready by making sure there's no air bubbles. I focus on expressive arts therapy. My classes here are visually arts based, and I work with students. Um, primarily in ceramics. Um, right now we're doing a ceramics mosaic class. Clay is such a tactile material. For some students their goal may just be to touch the clay and that will engage their senses. Um, for other students they might be working more on hand building techniques to create um, something more complex. Uh, we also work in collaboration so one student may be touching the clay and flattening the clay with their hands while another student is cutting the clay into pieces. A lot of our students are very tactile defensive. Uh, they don't like to touch materials. They're very restrictive in what they will work with. So slowly integrating those materials and um, allowing them to work at their own level and their own comfort level um, is very rewarding for the students. Microphone check one, two. Welcome to Arts and Services for Disabled. This is where we come in in the morning and wait for classes to get started. Our Monday sing-alongs is a great place to be. As a music therapist, I spend time with students working to achieve non-musical goals through the use of musical interventions. Um, things like songwriting or uh, group playing of instruments or uh, music and movement and in that way we can use music which stimulates a lot of different parts of the brain to um, meet goals that might not necessarily be achievable if you were just using words or talking therapy or things like that. So one of the things that Arts and Services for Disabled is based on is an evidence-based researched methodology and protocol our platform is built on the developmental skills and the developmental model and our, our staff, our highly qualified trained staff, use that evidence-based protocol to create their classes that are tailor-made for each individual student. What do you like huh? about being here? Um, um, everything. Singing. I like the singing. I like the art. Fun. Yeah. Party. Party. Because it's Puya. Our music therapy internship program is approved by American Music Therapy Association since 1984. So one of the techniques our music therapy interns use is called the Neurologic Music Therapy Techniques, helping the student to really improve their gait and their balance by uh, practicing their gait with the rhythms and the music. You're listening to Art Radio. One of the programs we do is called Art Beat Radio, and it's um, a collaborative radio and sort of internet experiment right now, sort of ever-evolving. Good evening and happy Valentine's Day. Welcome to another hour of Love Songs. Love, love.
We have a yearly internship that's a summer internship where our students work with a, I think, a 10-week intern to develop an idea and record a podcast, and then they travel up to KPFK Studios in North Hollywood and are able to present that on the radio. This is Ruben Camacho signing off. Some of the ways Arts and Services for Disabled engages with the community is through uh, a micro-enterprise business model, which includes uh, a gift shop, essentially, where our students are making everyday wares that um, they are making in the studio space and they're selling via an online gift shop and also a physical gift shop. What's the song called? Rainbow Connection. Mm. Mm, that's good. Another way that we engage with the community is through social media. Um, it's a great way for students to share their work, uh, both finished products, pieces, or the process that they're in engaged in. Projects that we've worked on recently um, have included the Play Me I'm Yours exhibition. The students uh, were given a piano and they were asked to, um, to make art on the piano. They stripped the piano, um, they painted it, they embellished it, and the end, the end goal of the exhibition was to place this piano in an outdoor space so that everyone can have access to music. My grandfather was an artist, so it kind of runs family. The exhibits department of ASD is really important because uh, it gives the students a voice. It is my responsibility as the exhibits coordinator to host and curate a variety of art exhibits. Um, what that entails is finding community exhibits for the artists that attend the programs here at ASD. An artist who uh, recently had a solo exhibit is Christina Mariata. Uh, she attends our Long Beach program at the Art Center and she has grown exponentially. The process of art making itself, uh, learning new techniques, learning new mediums, uh, it's allowed her to explore a variety of her interests. It's a way for her to communicate things that she may not be able to communicate as clearly verbally. I draw her. She's a beautiful lady and she's gonna be happy lady. You make art first, first you make it for yourself, but you want others to see it, to experience it. You don't want to tuck it under your bed. Um, the students are no different. You know, they want, they want to share what they're doing and they want to get your feedback and their work in whatever way you experience it, I think, um, should be seen and it should be a part of the larger arts community, not specifically the disabled arts community. Arts and Services is now grown to embrace the community, not only through creating more programs for people with developmental disabilities in all different cities um, of Southern California, but we also have what's our ancillary programs, our accessible arts program, which is outreach that goes to special education, school districts. We work with board and care homes. We have a partnership with UCLA Pathways program. We work in medical hospitals. We have our creative arts program enhancement program where we're able to go out into the community and enrich programs that may not have the creative arts and want a more inclusive uh, programming. I believe that the arts are the bridge. It's the bridge to the future. It's the bridge to human aesthetic. It's the bridge to helping people feel good and to heal and to go places where they've never been able to go before. And I believe that you and the community and anyone else that's got something to give, that has a passion, that has an advocacy, together we can create. We can create so many things. And that could be through volunteering, through being on the board of directors, helping with an event. Come in and uh, give our students a concert. Invite our students to come to you. Invite us to come and give a workshop at your school. There are so many different places where we can go. The arts 
are the way to the future.